Okay, good morning. Shall we start? Okay. Um, after a week of no class, I guess what we discussed has gone. Okay. So let's start again. On the first class, I introduced what was what that matter for the first class is the definition of tensor. Okay? Tensor is something that has two directions. Okay? For instance, this the whole thing together has two directions, direction one and direction two. I always use direction one to be a single arrow, direction two to be double arrow. Okay? So in this case, this tensor has two directions, direction x and y. If the magnitude of each direction is one unit, the whole thing would have magnitude of one. So it is unit tensor. Okay, it is unit tensor delta x delta y. On the other hand, if the first direction is going in y direction, the second direction goes in x direction, this tensor will become unit tensor delta y delta x. These two are not the same. Okay, that's from the first class. For the second class, we introduce experiments having two plates. The top plate is fixed. This is fixed or stationary. This plate is moving with velocity V, capital V. At small t, or at small time at the very beginning, you start moving. And we know that, according to the video I showed earlier, as long as you move the solid plate, the liquid attaching to that solid plate will move with the same speed. That is called no slip condition. Okay? So initially, once you start moving this plate at velocity v, the liquid next to it would move with the same velocity. And at steady state, this plate moves with speed v. The liquid would slowly progress upward so that velocity around here should not be zero anymore. And at steady state, you obtain velocity profile, which is basically function telling velocity with respect to the position, like this, it would be linear. That's because at this point, velocity at the solid interface is supposed to be equal to velocity of solid itself. Here, velocity is zero. Here, velocity is v. Right in between is distributed linearly. You have linear velocity distribution, OK? And at the end of the class, we try to somehow derive equation or develop the equation explaining distribution by means of force. We know that you apply force to the plate. The force itself is in the same direction as the moving direction. So the shear, the, the stress becomes shear stress. Okay? And the magnitude of shear stress would give you the velocity difference. Okay? So therefore, shear would be related to the change in velocity with respect to the, to the position. This is what we call Newton law, or Newton law of viscosity. This is from our second class. Just want to remind you that this equation was developed based on observation. It was somehow derived, not derived, proposed by Newton based on this experiment. So this is not a theory. It's not a law. It's not like first law of thermodynamics. Okay? This is experimental equation. Okay? And whenever you have 
this number, which is called viscosity. If viscosity is constant with respect to time, with respect to position, the fluid itself is called Newtonian fluid. That's what we have learned from two classes. Does it come back now? Okay. All right. For today, we will try to finish chapter one in the text. Okay? So that at the end of the class, you can somehow relate what you can measure, which is velocity, to what is transferred in the system. Okay? So the goal for today is developing the equation telling you how the the variable that you can measure can be expressed in terms of the variable which is the mechanism of the transfer inside the system. All right. Let us start back to this equation, to this experimental setup again. Initially, liquid inside here does not move. You start moving the plate, and then it starts slowly move along with the plate. And at the end, the whole liquid moves. Okay? This area. At this picture, it does not move yet. All right? On the other hand, this area, the red area, same volume, next to the blue area. This area, you can see that it has tiny velocity already. Okay? So at this point, this group of liquid already moved with some certain speed. The blue one does not move yet. Okay? If I project the position to this group. After the system has reached the steady state, you see that now the red area has velocity. The blue area also has velocity as well. So something is taking place so that the blue area somehow can move, okay? How can you move? What makes you move? Mechanically, people in mechanics would try to describe by means of force. You are pushed, you are pulled to move, okay? But in the term of this guy, the, the guy who invent or discovered this, he said that whenever you move, you have momentum. Because momentum it is basically mass times velocity, right? If in this picture, velocity is in x direction, Momentum here should have direction as well. Okay? You can see from the math mathematical expression, mass is scalar, velocity is vector. So when you multiply them together, the momentum is supposed to be vector. Okay? So if, moment if velocity is moved in x direction, Momentum is supposed to be in x direction as well. So this is x momentum. So the first lesson for today is that you have to recognize that the momentum is a vector. It has the size, it has direction. Okay? Now, I have mass, although it's not so much. I have mass. I stand still. I don't have velocity. So I don't have momentum. Agree? I am this guy. 
the blue guy. I am blue. I have mass. The blue guy here has mass. It doesn't move yet. So right now, at this picture, the blue area does not have momentum. In other words, momentum of the blue area here is zero. Agree? So if I note it here, x momentum right now at this picture is zero. On the other hand, the red guy next to me, he has velocity. He has mass. So he must have x momentum, which is not zero. Agree? OK? So same thing projecting to this picture. Now I have the blue area gain something so that eventually, now x momentum of the blue guy is no longer 0. Right? This guy has mass. He has velocity. So he must have x momentum. So from this picture on the left-hand side to the right-hand side, considering the blue guy only, he received something so that he can move. OK? In the point of view of this picture, this guy, Newton, said that, let's say he start with no momentum. He end up with some momentum. That means along the way, he received momentum. Just like you start with zero baht, no money, and you end up with some money in your pocket. So you receive money. Someone give you money. All right? You start with no momentum. You end up with having a momentum. That means along the way, you receive momentum. Who gives you that? In this picture, he postulated that the one who, who gave this guy a momentum is basically the guy next to him. So there will be a direction, I mean, there will be a transfer of momentum from red guy to blue guy. So this double arrow signify momentum transfer. OK? So there's transfer of momentum from the red area to the blue area so that the blue area can move. And before I give you some minutes, couple minutes to write it down, please see it here that the momentum transfer, the mo mo momentum being transferred right now is x momentum. So I have to say that this is x momentum transfer. OK? So momentum itself is in x direction. But the direction of the transfer is in y direction. This is y. This is x. Again, direction of the momentum itself is in x direction because velocity is in x direction. But the direction of the transfer in this picture is in y direction. The momentum transfer would always transfer from high velocity to low velocity. OK? I give you a couple of minutes just to write it down.
Okay. Now, I I wrote it here. Please write it down as well. Momentum transfer or the transfer of momentum should take place on uh, from the region of high velocity to the region of low velocity. Okay. From the picture, you should have this velocity, the red red area has higher velocity than the blue area. So the transfer momentum would go from the high velocity area to low velocity area, always. Just like the transfer of energy would start from the region of high temperature to the region of low temperature in the same manner. Okay? Now, in this picture, velocity is in x direction only. So therefore, the fluid in this picture only has x momentum. But the transfer of momentum takes place in y direction. OK? So if I somehow write down the momentum that is transfer, the momentum that's being transferred from one region to another. All right? If I divide it by time, that is called rate of momentum transfer. If this number is large, that means momentum being transferred is transferred quickly. Within short period of time, a lot of momentum being transferred. In other words, the blue guy receive momentum within very short period of time. That means he will move quite quickly, right? Imagine yourself standing with no momentum. A car hits you. A car has momentum, right? What will happen to your body? Move away, right? You hit and you fly it away. The faster the car, the velocity of the car, the faster your body would go blew away. Because momentum that the car transferred to you is transferred very shortly within a short period of time. In other words, you receive momentum at high momentum transfer rate. OK? Now, the rate of transfer is also depending on the area that you receive the momentum. If the area is large, let's say one unit of momentum is transferred to the large area, comparing to one unit of momentum transfer to small area, the effect supposed to be different. The smaller area having large number of momentum supposed to gain momentum more quickly, right? So it also depends on the area. If I divide it by area, momentum per unit area, per unit time, this is called momentum flux. Just imagine like energy. If small area receive energy quickly, th that area would heat up quickly. If you have large area, large body, large object, receives small energy within unit time, that large body would have en temperature rise more slowly. Okay? Same thing. 
So you receive something. Once, once you receive something, another thing rise. I receive energy, my temperature rise. Temperature is what you can measure. Energy is what being transferred. I receive momentum, my velocity rise. Okay? So same thing. Velocity is something that we can measure. Momentum is something that we receive. Understand? So the rate of received depends on time. How quickly I receive it and the area, how large of my body. Okay? So, back to this line, it said momentum transfer depends or start from high velocity to low velocity. This sentence alone means that there must be a difference in velocity, right? So here give you difference in velocity. In other words, sometimes the kind word or the more refined word is called velocity gradient. So the word gradient means you have something that is not uniform. Okay? So whenever you have velocity gradient, it means that you have the area with different velocity. So whenever you have velocity gradient, it means you always have momentum transfer. Okay? So we will say that velocity gradient is a driving force for momentum transfer. Just like temperature gradient is a driving force for heat conduction or energy transfer in the same manner. Okay? So if you look at unit of the momentum, momentum itself has unit of kilogram meter per second, right? Momentum is mass times velocity. So the unit of momentum is supposed to be kilogram meter per second, okay? This is momentum. If I divide it by time, now I have time over here, second over here. I divide it by area, and then I have meter square. Okay? Now we have kilogram per meter second. square, right? Kilogram, meter here, and meter there cancel out. You have one meter as a denominator and second square. Okay? So let's look back at unit of tau. What is unit of tau? Tau is shear stress, which is force per unit area. So tau itself is a stress, which is force per unit area. Okay? Force is equal to ma. M is kilogram meter per second square, this is force on Newton. Newton is kilogram meter per second square. You divide it by area, which is meter square. What you have here would be kilogram 
per meter second square, which is the same. Same unit. Okay? So Newton realized that. And he took a look at this equation again. And he said that this variable depends on dv. Physical meanings of differentiation is different, right? It's different. This is the difference in velocity with respect to position. So the whole thing here is how velocity is changing with position. So dv by dy here is basically velocity gradient. So this variable depends on velocity gradient. Just like what we discussed, momentum transfer depends on velocity gradient. And momentum transfer or momentum flux has this unit, which is also the same as the unit of tau. So he interpret this equation that tau itself also has the second meaning of being momentum flux. OK? So in this sense, you have to realize tau has two meanings. On one hand, you may interpret tau as the stress, force over, over area. On the other hand, you can also interpret tau as the momentum flux. Both are the same way, same thing. They are essentially the same. OK? I keep, give you a couple of minutes. Write it down. Make sure you understand. Okay, so on one meaning, last class we said tau is a shear stress. It's a stress from force in x direction. Remember, we pull the plate in x direction so that the flow would go in x direction. So the shear stress occur from force in x direction, and the force itself act on the area, this area. The area is perpendicular to y direction. So tau yx, you have to look at the second subscript first. The second subscript tells you the direction of the force or direction of the movement. And then the first subscript is direction perpendicular to the area that force is acting upon. But now today, I said tau yx is also momentum flux. OK? Now, if you go back to the picture, you see that right now, these two areas, or these two after receiving momentum, has momentum. They have momentum. And their momentum is in x direction, because velocity is in x direction. So it has x momentum. So the momentum truck, momentum flux supposed to be x momentum. 
is a transfer of x momentum. But the transfer direction takes place in y direction. OK? So in the meaning, we say that the second meaning is say it tells you x momentum being transferred in y direction. OK? These are exchangeable. They are essentially the same. If you take fluid mechanics in mechanical engineering department, they would do the same thing. But instead of explaining how momentum is transferred, they would try to explain using force balance. OK? But they will give you the same law, same equation. Now, as chemical engineering, we use, we prefer these meanings because it is similar to energy transfer and mass transfer. So if we rely on this interpretation, we can use the same concept to mass and energy as well. So basically, we are a little bit smarter. All right? If you notice, this variable has two directions associated with it. First direction is the direction of the momentum itself. The second direction is direction of the transfer itself. OK? So this is a tensor. It has two directions. Please don't be confused. The momentum, the momentum by itself is a vector. It has only one direction. Its direction depends on direction of velocity. If I move in x direction, I have x momentum. If I move in y direction, I have y momentum. Okay? If I move between x and y, how do I define my momentum? If I have axis like this, x and y, if I move in this direction, I have x momentum, right? If I move in this direction, I have y momentum. What about if I move like this? How many directions do I have? One, I have one direction. This is still a vector. But this vector can be displayed or can be written as a function of two unit vectors. Just like if I have vector v, I can say that I have vx and vy. So vector v would be vxi plus vyj. OK? It is still vector. It has one direction, one single direction. But that direction can be written as a function of another two vectors. It doesn't mean that I have two directions. OK? Please be clear. Momentum itself is a vector. But Momentum flux This momentum flux tells you how the momentum is being transferred So it has two directions It becomes tensor It has two direction the first direction is direction of momentum itself This direction is basically that direction. The another, another direction is direction of the transfer.
like this, tau yx is x momentum transferring in y direction. Okay? So if I write down tau yx, would it be like this picture or that picture? The first direction always would be in single arrow. So I have x momentum, x momentum going this way, being transferred in y direction. Okay, so tau yx looks like this. All right? So if I rewrite If I rotate this direction a bit, like this, can you imagine why it's going into the wall? This is x, this is z. If I write this direction, the first direction is always single arrow, okay? So this is x momentum. If I move in x direction, I have velocity in x direction of vx, so therefore I have x momentum. If x momentum is being transferred in this direction, now I'm talking about tau yx, right? If I have x momentum being transferred in this direction. What is it? This is how zx. Okay? So once you see tau zx, you have to know right away that now in this picture, velocity is changing in which direction? If I go in z direction like this, do my finger experience different velocity? If I go in this direction? Now, let me ask again. If I talk about tau zx, what kind of velocity do I have? Vx, Vy, or Vz? Vx, right? This tells you direction of the velocity. So if I have Zx, it means right now I have x velocity of Vx. So imagine the current going this way, the flow going this way. So if I'm drowning in the fluid, the fluid is going to the your right hand side. Okay? Now if I try to measure velocity down here and up here, do you think I have the same velocity? If I have tau zx? No. Why not? Because there's a momentum transfer in z direction. And momentum transfer always follow difference in velocity. So if I have momentum transfer in z direction, that means velocity are different in z direction, right? OK? Now. If I say that on the meaning of momentum transfer, this is x momentum being transferred in y direction. This is x momentum being transferred in z direction. OK? So what if I have x momentum being transferred like this? What is it? This is xx. OK? 
So that means I have velocity in x direction, but velocity at this point and at that point are not the same. In other words, you may have acceleration in x direction, right? Because this direction tells you, I mean, the second direction is a direction of transfer. It transfer in the direction that have different velocity. Understand? Another one, let's say tau x, y. How do I write it? If y direction is going to the wall, that means now I have velocity in y direction. The second subscript always tells direction of the velocity. So now instead of having fluid flowing this way, now fluid is flowing this way. Right? And now x is in this direction. Fluid is flowing this way, but it's changing in this x direction. On my left hand side, fluid may flow different velocity than my right hand side. But both fluids flow in y direction. Understand? So tau y x y supposed to be written like this. Okay? So you can vary x x x y x z and so on. Eventually, you end up with nine components. If you combine all nines, you get a tensor tau. Just like when you combine Vx, Vy, Vz together, you end up with vector V, generic vector V. Understand? Am I going too slow? I would love to spend more time on this so that you understand what really happened before moving on to the calculation, the fun part. Okay? So, this column, we just talk about momentum flux or momentum transfer. Now, if I also discuss stress, okay? Tau yx is a force in x direction per area perpendicular to y direction. In other words, now the force and the direction are not in the same direction. That's why this is called shear stress. Zx is it shear stress as well? The force is, is in x direction. It acts on the area perpendicular to z direction. Now, x direction is going this way. Z direction is going this way. So the area perpendicular to z direction is like this. That's, that means you're moving this way, right? This is zx. If it is yx, x is going to the, this direction. This is x, right? y is going in that direction. So area perpendicular to y looks like this. OK? This is yx. This is zx moving this way as well. So zx moving like this, yx moving like this. Move in the same direction, but area are not the same. OK? So this is also shear stress. But xx is not. Because force is going in x direction, but the area now go this direction. The area is perpendicular to the force. This is called normal stress. 
So normal in this sense means perpendicular. If someone said you are normal, doesn't mean you are normal. You may just stand right up. You're normal. Any question? Can you catch up? Still good? All right, we have 30 minutes left. Oh, before I erase this. Now, the transfer in this picture takes place from one area to the area next to it. Okay? So like, you, in order to receive momentum, two areas must be in contact. Okay? So it does not depend on the flow of the fluid. You know, the fluid is moving this way, but transfer can go this way. It does not involve the flow of the fluid at all, the transfer itself. So this is considered as molecular transport. So all of this would be molecular transport. Remember, we, ha we divide the transport into two mechanisms. One is molecular transport, being transport without depending on the flow, like conduction in heat. The other one is called convective transport, depending on the flow, just like convection in heat. Okay? So tau is considered as molecular transport. Now, this might confuse a bit. All right, so if I have a system or a box within the fluid. This box is basically a piece of fluid, just small area of the fluid, small volume of fluid that I consider in my system. Okay? In general case, the fluid can move in any direction. So in general, the velocity of fluid is generic V. So that means I can have Vx Vy and Vz, all of which are not zero. So if I have this direction, x, y, and z, and my fluid move like this. So my fluid has three velocity components. Okay? So in general, I may also have nine components of tau. That means I have tau xx, xy, xz, yx, yy, yz, and zx, zy, zz. Okay? So if I go back to the definition of being stressed. Stress is supposed to be force act on the area. So if I look at this area, I rewrite the area, enlarge the picture. 
Okay. If the force is in this direction, what is the subscript? This is tau. If the force going in this direction or velocity going this direction, what is the This is supposed to be xz, right? First direction, single arrow, always go for the direction of the force or direction of velocity. Velocity going in z direction, the second subscript would be z. Act on the area, this area, this plate. This area is perpendicular to x direction, so this is x. Okay, so if I look in terms of force, I'm drawing this force on this plate. The force is going this way. The plate is not perpendicular to the force, so this is shear stress. Shear stress x z. What about this one? It acts on the same plate. So acts on the area perpendicular to x. But the direction of the force going in y direction. So this is x, y, right? What about this one? It's going perpendicular to the area, and the area is perpendicular to x. So this is x, x. OK? I can write the same thing on this plate. This front plate now would have area perpendicular to y direction. So that would be y, x, y, y. Y, Z. OK? So in general, I would like to draw an equation or write an equation expressing tau in all components. And the equation looks like this. Okay, this is generic equation for all nine tau. If you want tau x x, that means i is x, j is x, like this. You get minus mu d v x by d x because i is x, j is x, plus d v x by d x plus two third mu minus k dvx, so on. No. 
okay? And this is delta 1, 1, or xx. Now, this guy, if the subscripts are both the same, like this, then it is 1. If they're not the same, then it is 0. Okay? So for tau xy, my i is x, my j is y. So this is dvy by dx plus dvx by dy. All right? Plus something delta xy. Now the subscript are not the same. The whole delta here turns to be 0. So I don't have to care about this term anymore. OK? The delta itself is called Kronecker. Kronecker. Delta. So basically, if the subscript are the same, Kronecker delta turns to 1. If they're not the same, it is 0. OK? In this equation, you know velocity, you know x, y, z, you know viscosity. We talked about viscosity already. The other, the other thing that you do not know is k. k here is called dilational. Viscosity. Just a name because you will never use it. Why? Transport phenomena discuss about fluid. There are two kinds of fluid gas or liquid. Okay? If it is liquid, we will assume liquid to be incompressible. That means density of liquid remains unchanged. We will learn eventually in chapter 3 that for for incompressible fluid you get this term to be zero. Okay? If you have gas, or if you consider gas, normally we consider ideal gas. So for ideal gas, dilation of viscosity is zero. So if your system is gas, you don't have to worry about dilation of viscosity. If your system is liquid, this term is zero. Doesn't matter whether k is zero or not, you will not use k anymore. So this guy, k, the dilation of viscosity, will never be used in this course. All right? It will, it will be used in advanced transport phenomena. If you're interested, I can give you a hint. OK? Now, it is not convenient to use it, this equation to describe each individual component. It would be more convenient to replace this equation or try to write an equation to describe all nine components at once. How do we do it? We turn each component into tensor and generalize this equation in tensor form.
All right. You see that equation looks similar. Okay. Now, this has two lines. It is tensor. It has nine components. Del itself is a vector operator. I'll, I'll, I introduced this one in the first class. It is differentiation with respect to x, with respect to y, and z. It is vector operator. V itself is a vector, has components vx, vy, and vz. But I told you that whenever you have two vectors together, the whole thing turns to be tensor. Okay? So this whole thing has nine components. Each component is being differentiation of velocity with respect to x, y, and z. The same thing applies here. Only this t is transposed. You know, we can write it down like matrix, nine, th three by three matrix. If I swap column to row and row by column, that is called transposing the matrix. This is transpose. All right. This is scalar. This is vector dotted by vector. We defined this already. Delta dot vector is differentiation with respect to each position. Okay? So within this parenthesis, you have vector dot vector that becomes scalar. You have scalar multiplied by scalar. You get scalar back. But the whole equation is tensor. So you need to multiply by this, del this tensor, Kronecker delta. This tensor looks like this. Or it is, ident uh, what is it called? Identity tens matrix? Yeah. It has, it's, the component is one when you, have, you consider diagonal position. The rest are zero. So the whole equation is a tensor equation. All right. The good thing about this equation is that it's not it's no longer restrict to any coordinate. This equation is restricted to Cartesian coordinate or rectangular coordinate. This one, you can apply for rectangular, cylindrical, and spherical coordinates. We will discuss that later on. OK? Now, before we dismiss the class, I have one topic left. It's uh, chapter 1.9 in the text, or 1.7. Now, generic liquid or fluid, one particular piece of fluid in the system, if it has velocity v, OK? This is generic vector, can go in any direction. If I calculate momentum, now, it has velocity in general v. Can I say that now this piece of fluid has x momentum, y momentum, and z momentum? Can I say that? This, you have Vx, Vy, Vz, right? Generic velocity can be split into Vx, Vy, Vz. Whenever you have Vx, you have x momentum. Whenever you have Vy, you have y momentum. And then you also have z momentum. So even though your fluid moves in one direction, there's only one direction, but this is generic direction. 
In this picture, now your fluid has three kinds of momentum associated with it. It has x momentum, y momentum, and z momentum all together at the same time. Understand? So, in general, if I take momentum divided by volume, volume of the box, that momentum is basically mass times velocity, which is vector, divided by volume. Mass per volume is density times V. All right? So if I take, if I'm interested in momentum flux, which is momentum per area per time. And I like to start with momentum per volume. In order to get area out of the volume, you need to multiply by distance. Volume is meter cubed. You have to multiply by meter to get meter square. And you have to divide by time to get momentum flux, like that. The whole momentum volume here, the momentum per unit volume, is rho v. Okay, this is flux. Now, if I consider x momentum, which is rho vx, okay? Momentum per unit volume is rho v. If it is in x direction, it becomes x momentum. So now in my picture, I have rho vx, rho vy, rho vz, because I have all three kinds of momentum. I'm going to consider x momentum first. Now suppose the velocity in the whole system is not uniform. That means there will be a transfer of momentum. If I allow the transfer to be in all directions, that means velocity of all position are totally different. We can have transfer in all direction. Okay? For x momentum, it can transfer in three directions. If first I consider transferring in x direction, That means I have the box. And it is transferring. Remember, transfer is in second direction. I use double arrow for second direction. This is direction of the transfer. X momentum, transfer in X direction. So the area this area supposed to be area perpendicular to the direction of the transfer, right? Flux is something per time, per area. This area is supposed to be perpendicular to the flux. So if I say transferring in x direction, that area for denominator supposed to be this area. Okay? So if I take momentum per unit volume and I want to convert into area, 
I need to multiply by distance. But distance, I can have distance in x, y, and z. Which distance should be used? Imagine the volume is the whole box. I want this area. I need to cancel out one direction. This direction, right? In other words, if I take this area, multiply by this direction, I get the whole volume. On the other hand, if I take the volume, divide by this direction, I get the area, right? So that means the distance in this picture or in this equation supposed to be in this direction. So this is the distance I want. Therefore, the distance over time in this equation for this particular case supposed to be Vx. Distance per time, that's velocity. And velocity in the direction that I want, this is direction that I want, that's Vx. Understand? So therefore, momentum flux in this case should be rho Vx, which is x momentum. This is x momentum, time distance per time, which is another Vx. So the first one is momentum per unit volume. The second one is distance per time, according to that equation. The whole thing after combination, it turns to be momentum flux. Flux of what? Flux of x momentum transferring in this direction. So if I write down direction of the momentum itself, the direction is supposed to go this way, right? X momentum, first single arrow, transferring in double arrow, transferring in X direction. So this one is a momentum flux of X momentum being transferred in X direction. To make it easier, let's also consider another direction. Still, still considering x momentum, but now transferring in y direction. If it is y direction, It is transferring in y direction. This is direction x, y, z. So it is going this way, right? Double arrows indicating the direction of the transfer going in y direction. So the flux, which is momentum per unit area, that area is supposed to be perpendicular to the direction of the transfer. Since it's going in this way, the area for the flux is supposed to be this area. Okay? And I have the whole volume. I need to subtract one direction out, take one direction out to get the area. The direction that I need to take out is in this distance. So the distance for that equation supposed to be in this direction. Then, if I take distance divided by time, that would be Vy, right? Going in this direction per unit time, that's velocity in y direction. Therefore, the momentum flux would be x momentum per unit volume 
multiply by distance per time vy. So if I write down the direction of the tensor, now I have x momentum transferring in y direction. Understand? So if now you, you change from x momentum to y momentum, now you have transferring in x, y, and z. And then z momentum transferring in x, y, and z as well. So you will end up with rho vx, vx, rho vx, vy, rho vx, vz, and all that, nine components. OK? This component is also flux, just like tau. But now, it does not consider transferring from the neighbor. The direction of transfer doesn't tell you that it is transferred by the neighboring area. It depends on the flow. It depends on the flow totally by flow. OK? So momentum can also be transferred by the flow. For instance, have you seen um, the, when, when people protest, there's a lot of people on the street, right? In China, maybe China, when they want to somehow dissipate the people, what do they do? They use water, shoot water toward people. Have you seen that? And water is so strong, once it hits you, you blew away. That is a transfer of momentum as well. Okay? Just like this, you have a people, and you don't like this guy, you take water horse, shoot water toward this guy. He stands still at first, he received momentum, he blew away. So there's a momentum transfer. Okay? But momentum transfer like this, consider the whole flow, not just one part to another. The whole fluid, this is bulk flow. So therefore, this is called momentum transport by means of convect convection, or by means of bulk flow. That would be expressed by rho VV. So momentum flux can be divided into two parts, tau and rho VV. Tau is molecular transport. Rho VV is convective transport. Any question? That's the end of chapter one. We need more time for chapter two and three. So uh, chapter one is all about concept. Okay, hopefully you get one. If not, uh, you can ask any question. All right, time is up. If you have question, come to ask. Otherwise, see you on Thursday.